So today we're talking, you wanted to talk about black and white and what are the differences of it and what combines it and what makes it seemingly uh, linguistically and from a sensible uh, uh, um, standpoint the same. Um, black and white seem to be the same. It's all about a certain thing that they both have black and white and we can show today um, how through the linguistic and etymological voyage um, those things come together and how we are how we are you know how our senses are being tricked um, through the words when it seems to be the same um, root meaning of both the words black and white yeah <clears throat> yeah as usual it's that uh, it's essentially what we're so th to give context um for anyone listening is obviously um most people are well aware of what's going on in the world it's pretty much um global worldwide protests and um as always ongoing outrage and um and, <laughs> more more like just plain out plain out you know outright rage um being you know uh released in the public atmosphere of course always around racial tensions being stirred up by the controlling elite of the world um the elites the elders of l always want to pit us against each other through dichotomies and dialectics and um obviously the best way to do that is to provide what's known as the false dichotomy which is basically a limitation of two false choices um, the illusion of choice so that you only have there's seemingly only two answers you know to all solutions to all the problems in the world is is there's only two two choices to choose from you can either choose left or right red or blue black or white you know the the masonic tracing board of of life of society of the civilization that has been built by um, the builders of civilizations, which um, obviously that tracing board is useful for building, <clears throat> you know, structures and for building civilizations, but it's also very useful for controlling those civilizations and controlling the populations who are uh, being moved on that chessboard, just like pawns and like, um, or like marionettes on a string. So obviously the biggest forms of dichotomy to control is basically every type of dichotomy that's out there every whether it's race whether it's gender whether it's you know nationality whether it's um obviously even something as trivial as skin tone which um of course you know people will get offended by that just trying to trivialize you know uh, skin or race because you know obviously it's not just skin you know it goes deeper into the actual genetic history itself but um we want to cover um, at least I have wanted to cover and most uh, most a lot of us who are deeply tapped into um, you know this sort of conscious thinking have come across this somewhere along the way especially in the black community or uh, if we want so that's that's the funny thing the irony there is you know we're we're deconstructing um, these uh, these forms of control, such as using uh, the language of the word black. So we're going to get into the etymology of black, and um, m you know, most of the black community is already well familiar with this, the Moors, and you know, and um, you know, rightfully so. It's you know, most people have no idea where the origins of where, you know, the especially in the political sphere, like anything that's political being you know touted as. You know, Newspeak, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, you know, Huxley and, or Huxley and Newspeak, Orwellian Doublespeak, Doublethink, um, all these dichotomies of control. Obviously, the, the, way, they or, the way they originate <clears throat> is through the manipulation of language. And, of course, the language is what paints our perception. Because the, the language isn't, uh, it just derives from our, you know, perceptions of the world around us. You know, the, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's a huge, massive bug on my chair behind me. God damn! <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you said you you mentioned the chessboard, and that brings us to you know it it is the oldest game of the uh, of the elites. It is one of the oldest tools to to plan and to show uh, uh, contrasting differences. I mean, look at that 
uh, a board you know you have the black and white checkerboard of course but also the, f the figurines are um, exactly the same just with the other color and they can do exactly the same so it's a it's a mirroring um, of the light it's a mirroring of the uh, you know how, how things come into reality and the illusion the difference is just the illusion of it being different when the words mean exactly exactly the same because and, and we're going to show that mm -hmm. uh, when you when you go through black and um white uh it, it all comes back to this word to shine it means to shine black as well as white vice means to shine exactly that, yeah that is really interesting because we are not talking about the actual well coloration or, or the actual uh, shadow and light we're talking about what makes the shine and the difference is uh, simply that um, black absorbs all of the light and white reflects of the all of the light and it has something to do with the surface of course but underneath the surface it's all the same um, and and there we go you know we're already now in the middle of it where we can let's just take um, you know, let's just start with um, the religions that put a veil on on the faces of, of uh, women or also you know on on the clothing to to hide something, to give an appearance of something, to yeah. give a shine of something. We have the um, the nuns who usually have a white veil um, in Christianity, of course, yeah. and we have the black veil for the Muslims. You know, same thing. We're hiding something that is the beauty and the truth beneath the surface, you know, you have to lift the veil <laughs> to to see the actual truth of it to not yeah. be blinded by the light exactly and that's that's exactly what the controllers do is again you have the dichotomy there between christianity and uh, versus Mus versus islam you know so again there's there's that duality of the solar religion of christianity which is the solar religion versus the lunar religion again so again this court corresponds alchemically to obviously masculine versus feminine which gets us back into that you know same similar dichotomy as well again the solar versus the lunar again the the black veil versus the white veil again with the black you know the queen of spades versus the queen of hearts mm -hmm. you know the the oak king versus the holly king the saturn versus the sun you know the same dual you know polar opposites of, of the annual seasonal year that um battle and struggle and fight with one another for dominance and supremacy yeah. um which is the literally like the energetic engine of exchange that you know continues to produce you know anything that that operates in a in a flux like that what that does is that generates energy it's literally an energy harvesting perpetual motion machine essentially of the yeah. political of the political sphere but let's um unless you have um somewhere um that you were wanting to go um i want to actually just jump right into the actual um etymology and um yeah to, i just and, have one uh i just have one sentence you know we say like night and day uh difference like night and day and there you see how that difference you know it's it's just the light is different it's the same earth but we make it with the language that it's night and day you know that it's such a difference but the difference is really just the shine of it but yeah. yeah let's jump into the etymology yeah that's true um and yeah obviously and again the perspective between day and night is literally just our own perspective from where we are you know in physical location you yeah. know it's literally that just our perspective perspective of the actual whole you know it doesn't change the objective reality it doesn't change the objective whole of it it just yeah. it's just our subjective perception of what is going on and that is exactly, exactly. where exactly exactly yeah you can't take the two apart because there's uh, if there's light there's shadow there's there's 
blackness. If there's a、uh, uh, blackness, you know, it, we we cannot see it without light, so to speak. It's it's it's.、Uh, but we'll get into that with the edges and the gray a little bit later.、Um, why don't you start with the? Yeah,、Which、let's you know? do it. Okay, so、um, yeah, so Middle English. So black comes originally,、uh, most recently from Middle English, black,、um, black as well as Blake, Blake. Means black. Old English from Old English Blake.、Um, black dark also ink from Proto Germanic black as meaning burnt. <laughs> so black as as in black ass. Your your <laughs> which your black as means burnt. And、uh, again burnt charred meaning again the the light of the sun. You know the, the more sunlight we receive on our skin,、um, you know the darker we get. Or in other words, the more charred we become, the the more burnt essentially our skin tone becomes. Compare Dutch blaken、uh, meaning to burn. Low low German black、um, blackness black paint black ink old High German blah meaning black. Possibly from this is where、uh, what I think is highly interesting for,、um, from the Proto-Indo-European root,、um, or what you know some other、um, fringe thinkers simply like to change to Aryan rather than they don't like to use Proto-Indo-European, they like to use Aryan.、Um, but it, the original root word of all of this is blech. Is, <laughs> is yeah. And、that's that's what I find so funny about it is is black is 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 bleak is is bleak is which it, which bleak is is literally is is linked to bleach and and bleak which is bleh as it which Proto Indo European bleh is to burn or to shine. So again, back to that root in Latin flag flagrare meaning to burn.、Um, ancient Greek flos meaning flame.、Um, Sanskrit.、Uh, Ba- is that baharga meaning radiance?、Um, so the radiance again, the light and the shine and the burning of the shining of the light. And see more at bleach, which I haven't actually traced down to bleach, but yeah.、Um. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, it's there.、Uh, I got it somewhere here.、Uh, so there is the two, actually two.、Uh, there is a comparable root in the in the Aryan proto in the European, which is Blake. Uh, B H L E Y G, which which also means to shine, burn, scorch, and、um, that go that obviously already sounds like black,、um, yeah, and is is a synonym for for swart, which is you know the German word for for black is Schwarz, you know you know things like Schwarzkopf where it's the black head on the on the advertising,、uh, Schwarz means black,、uh, Schwa. Um, you have the swan, which comes in black and white.、Um, you have uh, uh,、um, all kinds. Uh, you know, e- even shadow. If you if you take、uh, if you take out、mm-hmm. and just leave the consonants, if you take out the vowels, that is always interesting、uh, in the etymologies. Then you you get. Just these, sh- 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 <laughs> just which is Schwartz and 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 Schwartz and and all these things. Same with、uh, a black and pale. Now, yeah, if you, if you take out the if you take out the A and the E, you know you get black and you get pl- for pale. <laughs> And 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 B L to P L. I mean, that's that's you know the the shift of the consonants.、Um, exactly. That is something everybody should make themselves、uh, familiar with.、Mm-hmm. How the language shift, the, the consonant shifts.、Uh, mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Op- it's the key to opening up this this whole、uh, conundrum. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So the so the B L and the P L they are both.、Um, so in the actual、um, phonetics is the B L and the P L. They're both plosives, which the plosive as obviously you know the the root of of explosive or implosive. The plosive refers to the sound that is made by the lips、um, coming together and blowing out the air in the sense of b p p p. So we have the the root consonants of B L and P L p and b. Is the same same thing. So that's just how you fill in whatever vowels you know from language to language, from you know、uh, country to country, you know. But it's ultimately the same bare bones structure of the same root languages. And so again, that gets us back into the the root of the of the black, which is blech, which is which is bleak. 
And so Bleak, again, this is, so essentially for people who have no idea what the hell we're talking about, black literally means white people, okay? So yeah. it, it's, a di it's a dichotomy. Everyone out there saying black lives matter, black lives this, black this, black that, black that, you're all just saying white lives matter. You're, you have no clue. Like, it's all the same fucking thing. It's the same thing, everybody. Like, I know you take such pride in your colors. I mean, everyone takes such pride in the in the color spectrum, you know, but uh, they're all just the one light. It's all the one light of creation. It's all the same thing. They're variants and shades of the one light of this. It's all physics. It's all nature. It's all cycles of nature. So again, that gets us back to the, the root of bleach, which um, we can go a little bit deeper into that, which um, provides more insights about the light and uh, sp specifically the white light and the black light, essentially, which are the same um so um i don't know if you want to um cover more on that or if you had somewhere else that you were um wanting to venture into right so now that we've established that uh black as well as white kind of mean shine i wanted to make clear that shine is not only the the physical thing where it shines a light um if you go to german and you put in the word shine, it has a couple meanings, but one of the meanings is the elusiveness or the illusoriness. So oh. it, like shine means to seem, you know, as shine so in German means it seems so. So shine and seem is, uh, is the illusion of it. And that is very important to know that shine not only means the physical light thing, it also means the illusion of it, like literally. So, you know, shine also means like a, a, a banknote. We, we, we call it Geldschein, which is, you know, it's a voucher. It's the illusoriness of uh, the illusion of actual money, but <laughs> it's just a, a voucher. It's just yeah. the illusion of it. Yeah. So there you have it, you know. And you, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. This is yeah. this is where the word, how the words work. Yeah. And for, for people for you know for people who aren't you know aren't well versed on this path of linguistics is the reason why this is so important you know most people will be like well so what the who the hell cares about German well the reason why it's so important is because literally the English language comes from Germanic um, so the, the, you have to understand you know for the the um, for the initiate you know the neophyte the person who is just you know beginning to um, Come to, coming to this type of information or this type of content is, you know, they have to understand that the Germanic language is foundational for understanding, you know, anything modern linguistics, especially in the court, you know, legalese, the court system is because, you know, it, it originates, you know, Germanic then became, you know, Latin, our modern English, you know, so, so it's highly important. And that's why um, I find these discussions with you so, you know, so crucial and, you know, why both you and I just absolutely snowball so much information together is because you you have um, a great um, understanding of um, uh, of that aspect you know being German as well um, so it, it provides a, a huge piece you know to the puzzle but of course for anyone out there you know these these uh, these uh, shows these listenings go you know cross-culturally you know worldwide which is great so everyone everyone has pieces to add you know to the linguistic puzzle to which you know adds pieces to you know showing what is actually illuminating what is shining the light on actually what is actually going on with all of these things so it's it's so foundational so important especially with the germanic um insights to add into there so i just wanted to throw that out is is how important that is to me yeah and, and another way uh, to show with the German word what um, what the shine and the, the mirroring and the reflection uh, is about it, um, so to speak, not the real thing. Um, we have a word for tin in German, which is Blech, B-L-E-C-H. Blech is literally tin, which is a shiny thing that reflects light, gives shine, you know. So there's another connection. Um, when you when you go first under where is it here in a dictionary when you first look up uh, the Proto-Germanic reconstruction of Blika, which is Blake to shine, it Blika it, it literally means shine 
the look of something and also has a meaning a third meaning as metal because you know it shines it, it reflects something that that it isn't you know yeah mm-hmm. yeah and and again there's i remember um that was something that clicked in my mind when we were um discussing this outline earlier on was um uh again we have the alchemical base metals that uh, come into play here and so of course tin um you you have tin copper mercury you know what was considered quicksilver obviously <clears throat> the most important being lead which is the densest which is represents the um the alchemical element of of the planet of saturn or rather the archetype of saturn which is the densest heaviest base metal um also associated with the darkness you know the darkness of the of the blackness of the bleakness of sat of saturn who is the ruler of capricorn which is the month of december which is the death the decline the decay of the season um, when everything dies when everything is at its most bleak it is also at at its most bleached because everything is palest it is white in the blackness of winter in the darkness of winter is when you have the duality the polarity of the whiteness and the bleakness and the paleness of the snow of the winter season so you have the duality again right there not just linguistically but it extends beyond the linguistics because of course the language derives from the reality of nature itself you know people always say well well, you know things like the language is you know it's it's false the language you know is just for control but no the language it's you know like you know that's where we all started out you know sort of getting into this language stuff was that oh it's all you know for control and everything but the deeper we get into it we realize how objectively true it actually is and that's the point of etymology is literally the true study of the true sense the true nature of things so of course you know it goes far beyond linguistics because the linguistics literally derive they were built upon the actual foundational observations of how nature really works Um, yeah and and go to go back to the that heavy 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 metal uh lead Right, uh, it is it is black, and it, it if you draw it, if you uh, put it on a piece of paper, it will make black. Um, you know, it, it will show something black on the paper. Uh, leave a yeah. residue there. Yeah, your and lead, your lead, lead pencil. The lead pencil, right? Uh, which in in German is Bleistift, because lead in German is Blei. B L E I. Well, again. that's well, that sounds exactly like pale, like ble, like bleak, yes. like like Blake. That's yes, it, exactly. And then you get words uh, lead. Uh, um, you know, English is so funny because you can write something one way and pronounce it a different way. It means something different, but it's the exact same spelling, lead and lead, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you are out in darkness and and you you don't shine yourself and you don't have know where to go, you don't have no way to go because it's dark. Then exactly. you need to be led by exactly. a leader. Yes. And, and that's that's what the goal is here. Keep us in darkness and find the false authority leader that will just make us a army of lead soldiers. You know, and that yeah. way we've been over two soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> the soul dyers but yeah um but exactly so so the leader you know the leader is the one who shines the light who carries the torch for right. for the others not just to light their own torch but who carries the torch and obviously um so the leader is the shining light which is the pillar of fire that led the hebrew israelites through the wilderness it's the pillar of light it's the pillar of fire which we each are and look um, at the obviously. word pillar p l r you know Killer. Um, oh. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same. Like, once you get so deep into the language, really everything is the same. Yeah. And really everything that means something also means the opposite. Because uh, ultimately, everything means the same. It's just a, a fractionality. It's just a fraction of our thoughts that gets filtered through this thing to make words. Exactly. Right? It's, yeah, it's 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 uh, the other way around from words back to the thoughts. The unpacking of it is so much harder because you know it's been def. You need to defrag it in your brain again, like a computer. You know, like a like a like a zip file. You know, you need to 
take all these things that are in there and, and blow it up and def defrag the whole thing and it's uh, much bigger than the actual file that gets transported um same thing yeah exactly it's how um you, it's it's how the universal oneness the wholeness um just simply um you know measures and divides itself and to measure and divide it has to um you know it has to uh demarcate certain you know things which which act as basically as markers to allow us to enable to you know orient ourselves you know not just through time but also through space and also through the evolution of language is it's just how the universal creation um you know divides itself which is how creation you know perpetuates is by um you know continuing completely complexity which the way that it evolves complexity is through further division i mean that's just how sacred geometry works which sacred geometry is i mean that's how this all is and i mean we could get deeper into like the actual um nuances of the language but the deeper you do that um you know the more it just brings you back to the the whole you know the holistic understanding of how it all you know <clears throat> um comes to be so again um the root origins of bleach uh, of bleak um uh, of blake uh, again the root root words uh, of black um uh, variants meaning you know bright shining glittering flashing pale uh, uh, again uh, linked to pallid again uh, similar to you know similar to pillar you know plr pillar you know the all essentially the same thing the bright the shining the pale light the so again that brings us back to you know the essence of white light and black light or dark light uh, again black light which is actually all ultraviolet light which is you know just simply outside of the visible you know red and blue spectrum which that's where you know i would speculate that the illuminati operate which is outside of the spectrum of their red and blue dichotomy of uh, you know david ike always goes on about oh it's all outside of the visible spectrum of light you know all the frequencies of you know the reptilians and the illuminati they exist beyond the frequencies of visible light and you know so we could you know get into that but uh, obviously yeah there i mean there is a whole full spectrum outside of you know the limitations of visible light which is you know the red to blue um beyond that you have the ultraviolet which is the purple which is you know the the essence of how the illuminati operates you know the ultraviolence is how they operate is, is by um polarizing that light spectrum of red and blue you know republican democrat black and white um islam and and christianity you know and and of course so well so who's the ones that are immune you know like where's the other a aspect of you know abrahamic religions that's you know um not manipulated by you know christianity and islam well that's the judaism which is the saturnian you know the stellar the the or, um, the stellar path essentially you know even though saturn isn't actually a, well i mean we could get into that but that's a whole other thing but um yeah yeah it's a here it's really important to to note that uh the colors the seven colors of the rainbow um where we get words like separation from sepa the seven the, the the seven fold of something comes all these colors come out of the black and white without black and white without the gray uh this uh, uh what is the word schnittstelle schnittstelle is uh, the intersection the the cut surface the the gateway um to the colors it comes on the edges so if you you know there are all these experiments and and you can i would encourage everybody to look up uh, a good uh, color spectrum versus newton's color spectrum there's some fantastic uh, youtube videos about that that explain the differences uh with hands on uh, um uh, mm -hmm. uh, tests that they're doing where they shine light through slits uh, uh, over objects between two objects and, and explain how the Newton um, prism works and how the the, the Goethe uh, um, color stuff works in yeah yeah um Jason Verbelli just uploaded uh, a video a video about that literally a couple days ago oh yeah mm -hmm. I haven't seen it yet um there's one that i was watching which is called 
uh, what is it called here? Uh, Goethe's Purple Ray, alias Monochromatic Rays of Shadow, which is a really good one. It's just like 17 minutes. Um, again, Goethe's Purple Ray. That that is a good one, which which shows it hands on. That when you when you shine light through a prism onto a surface, of course on the on the on the side of the you know on the edges you have the black and on those edges now when you put uh, an object into the light in the middle of it uh which is projected on some white surface then around the edges where the gray is there is the colors that's where the colors come in the colors come directly out of the gray the the gray births the colors the edges of between black and white is where the colors. On one side, you will see the blue, uh, the blue tones, uh, the blue purple tones, and on the other side, you will see the red and yellow tones. And um, that is just fascinating. That something we don't learn in school. That that colors work that way. That it literally comes out of the gray. And Goethe says, uh, you know, we wander in the realm of images because those images, the reality images, come through or appear through something that you put right in front of the light and on the edges, you will then have color appear. Now you do a few experiments and, and uh, bend it around the corner through slits and whatnot. Um, then what comes out is that they're all dependent on it on another so there cannot be uh, a blue without the red really you know because on one side you will have the blue and on the other side you will have the red and they, they cannot without another so you put you put that in the middle an object and shine the light on it blue on one side red on one side you cannot put one away you know you can you can shield it so that that, that it won't show but the reality is that that they both exist at the same time blue and red yeah and in, in the middle is uh, the purple ray and the purple is the only part spectrum of the light that you can isolate that can shine by itself around the corner through slits where it can stand by itself blue can't do that red can't do that yellow can't do that only the purple can do it and that brings us to the the, the purple ray and the mm -hmm. um ray roy you know the king brings us to the to the yeah. to the elites to the purple to the royal purple yeah the Ro roy l which again roy means king and l means also king essentially but it also refers specifically to the king l the king saturn who was the king of byblos the king of phoenicia who was the god king um obviously so again that's could be that you know a whole deeper uh, metaphysical significance to why the Tyrian, the royal tyrannical Tyrian purple is so significant um, to the Elites. Um, but about, um, since in, I'm not familiar with. Um, Honestly, I'm not familiar with Goethe's um, color theory, um, so I can't exactly follow you on that. So I, I can't um, expound on that. But while we are on the topic of the gray, as well as pertaining to the red and the blue, again, the red and blue spectrum, obviously, in in, uh, in Lucas, you know, Lucas theory of Star Wars is, again, you have the red and blue, which is, you know, the light and the dark aspects, the light and dark aspects of the force, you know, the duality of the force, which was most prominently, most recently, um, significant as the force dyad in the in the new sequel trilogy which everyone absolutely ever absolutely hates for good reason too i mean the story writing was absolutely terrible but there was new um esoteric significance added in there that you know all the fan base aren't simply privy to um such as why a, what a force dyad actually is 
because I mean they don't actually understand what a dyad is, which the dyad it literally means a ves- vesca Pisces is literally, uh, but specifically referring to the red and the blue, the masculine, the feminine, which is the ancient Greek hieros gamos, which is the holy holy matrimony, the holy marriage, the sacred union, the more um, uh, directly the alchemical wedding. But um, in between that, there was theory of the gray Jedi, which isn't um, officially you know it's not canon, it's not officially confirmed you know by Lucas or anyone else. It's just a fan a fan theory that's out there. But again, the gray Jedi are the ones that um, basically um, have diverged from the path of the Jedi Order and have basically stuck to basically um, serving just the, just the Force rather than the politics, which is what the Jedi Order started to become, you know, uh, political and upholding, you know, the Republic and letting the politicians dictate, you know, what they should do and how they should act, where the Grey Jedi deviated from that, or rather didn't deviate. They were the ones that stayed, you know, fixed in the center without being deviated by politics. Um, but right. es- essentially, so that's the gray. Which, but then we could get into um, what what I covered in the recent uh, my coronavirus documentary was the Inoculum of Truth film, where I covered some deeper esoteric meanings of what the gray significance is. As far as you know, we get the gray people, which are the NPCs, you know, and all the memes that are going, <laughs> the political memes going around. The NPC, which is the non-playable character, and I threw in several examples of how. Um, that is depicted symbolically in Hollywood and in uh, pop culture is, I mean, we had it in um, I, I threw in a hilarious um, imagery of the, the Power Rangers, you know, you had the, the Putty Patrol, who were literally they were greys, they were the NPCs you know, they were just like faceless you know, drones essentially, then you have the grey ETs, the, the Zeta Reticuli, um, which again it's all about emo- emotionless lacking humanity, essentially lacking, you know, morality um, it basically morally um, uh, bankrupt, you know, am- amorphous, asexual, you know, no sexuality, no, um, you know, none of these necessary polarizations that essentially that give us character, you know, that make us unique to who we are. You know, the greys are the ones, they're non-playable characters. They're they're checked out. They're in PC. Um Many other examples of how that's shown um, symbolically in Hollywood is anytime they're showing the gray, or in other words, the black and the white imagery, such as another example I showed was um, the film, uh, uh, what was it, Pleasantville, starring Tobey Maguire and uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon, which was a comedy about, again, there was this perfect, quote-unquote, dis- perfect um, uh, utopian society, but what they lacked was, they, it was it was depicted in black and white because it represents naivety. It represents yeah. represents nescience. No, you know, essentially, the Garden of Eden before they tasted of that bright, vibrant red apple. You know that that allowed them to you know illuminate their world basically in technicolor. You know, essentially, which could we could associate to you know like the psychedelics or whatever. But um, so the gray is the bleak is also the bleak. You know, in that sense, it's the sense of mm. it's bleak because it's you know it's essentially it's apathetic. It's lacking, you know that the. the true color the true color of life the true you know spectrum the vivid you know perceptions of human nature of human emotions though whether it's volatile or whatever the elites the elites want to take us into that also depicted in the film the giver um again was the black and white and it only came into color once jonas stopped inject taking his daily mandatory injections of the of the serum uh, which was essentially it was a memory uh, in amnesia serum which was also depicted in the divergent series of films um so that it just highlights you know the color symbolism the color parapsychology highlights a huge aspect of how you know the satanists and the elites and the the social engineers whatever you want to call them they are their social engineers they are driving the the public discussion via the media via the visual imagery via hollywood via you know the news everything we read everything we see everything we hear especially on social media and now it taken taken to the streets they're the ones driving and controlling the narrative and they want to take us into a gray state which was essentially a, a you know code word for police state is the gray state mm-hmm. you know you know this um 
but yeah, I don't if you want to um, have something to add on to that. Yeah, I want to just uh, quickly go back to the word purple because it's yeah. also uh, opens up so much stuff. It's it's amazing. So you know you have the P U R. Uh, PL again the PL again there at the end uh, PLE per Pearl so that uh, in German we have um, of course you have the in English too the word pure poor pure mm -hmm. the pure plane where that purple ray is is the pure plane is the purple uh, you know the kings in Germany when they couldn't get the the Tyrian purple then they're depicted with red um, uh, you know mm -hmm. red red clothing Cr and crim crim crimson yeah crimson red and on the and on the edges the the puffs or whatever you want to call it they were they were white with black speckles in there so the black and white and the red again and we call that poor poor that kind of red poor poor because it's such a deep deep red um, but it is the pure plate and that's what these people not only think they are and moving in they actually are that and they're actually moving in that because they don't accept you know a red and they don't accept a blue they want to be right in the middle in between both sides of it that's why we have you know mm -hmm. uh, a, a, tr a trans agenda that's why we have you know think it look at this look at that and meet in the middle um mm -hmm. a kind of thing uh, but that's the purity the the, uh, the same what they're hiding behind the veil is the purity of something you know when you get married you lift the veil for the first kiss you see the purity of the bride for the first time you know uh, supposedly and yeah. of course that that all plays in there and and the guy is is dressed in black mm -hmm. yeah true yeah definitely um yeah so of course the blood blue and red you know and where does it where does it uh, uh, meet in the capillaries in the lungs exactly in the lungs yeah. in, in the heart the, the pulmonary mm -hmm. where the where the breath comes in which is god breath is god god comes in and there it's purple you know the exchange of it and we are taught that from from the beginning in school uh you know it starts with sports and, and it never stop, stops with the sports, but most of the sports teams have either a blue, just like in politics, uh, or a red kind yeah. of color. The differences, and, and we either knowingly or unknowingly project that to the differences of, of the political system, you know, left and right, mm -hmm. blue and, and, and red. Yeah, it, it represents the polarity, and again, it's through those polarities is how you get those polarities in physics and in nature. Those polarities interact by by basically by flux. They flux, so in other words, they switch back and forth. It switches, it fluxes, it pulses, which is the pulse that gives everything animation, which gives it life. Um, and so that's the that's what it's all about. Is about the polarity. I mean, that's what the yin yang is uh, that's that's what you know the, the the in Taoist philosophy I mean it's it's all about whereas the, it's all about the way the Tao the Tao which is the the central it's it's the meeting point between the two and um, so that same polarity of red and blue as I covered in the symbols, uh, uh, symbolism will be their downfall ebook that I wrote. It, what, elaborating on that is um, if you shift that color spectrum just slightly uh, down the color wheel from red to blue, you get their most prominent symbolism, which is orange and purple, um, mm -hmm. or, or in other words, purple and gold. But it's the same polarity. It's the same primary color polarity as red and blue. It's just shifted down the spectrum, you know, from blue to purple and from red to orange or or from right. to, to orange, which is also amber. So in, in that sense, orange is also equated to gold um, because it's amber, and amber is both orange and yellow. It's the mix between orange and yellow, so it's it's gold. Um, so that's why they were so symbolic of purple and gold, um, which represents the two main royal elite houses, which were the House of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha, which is purple, and the House of Royal Dutch House of Orange, which is obviously orange. Or, yeah. uh, so... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And you see that, uh, I'm going to send you the video so you can maybe uh, take a few screenshots and show that like literally that on one side, the red and the yellow make the make the orange and on the other side uh, the, the bluish tones make, make come out with the purple and in the middle oh my god standing alone is the purple it's 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 the only thing that stands by itself and yeah they, they just take that and, and roll with it yeah i'll have to see that because honestly i i'm not familiar with with uh, what you're referring to so i, I would definitely have to check that out Mm -hmm. to see you know to see to see it for myself to understand it fully um right but let's see what else I what mean, else do we want knowing to knowing all that you know we i mean, it's the, of course you can go into so many things from that because it's really the the, the beginning of our uh perceived reality is all that and i just want to encourage everybody to to go into that you know lose yourself in that research because you will find an understanding uh, of the world that is that is just so more wholesome you know you get you get calmer because yeah. you now understand that it's not about pulling left pulling right fighting the whole time if you're in that state on one side you always looking at the other side, like in a stadium, you know, the the, mm -hmm. the the fans of the other team that are your enemies. Yeah. Because they're they're literally the enemies perceived, but they're just a mirror of what you're doing. They're also just cheering for their color. You know? Exactly. It's yeah. nuts. Exactly. Just the, their corner in the boxing ring, which is the same, me, literally the same meaning of debate, which is the French, old French debattre, which is to beat down to death. You know, so you, the the debate is literally it is about the beat down is. So that's exactly the the whole you know polarity, which again, but the stadium is literally it's just, you know, it's a unified whole that is just divided into two, so that the two can go, you know, to battle and to struggle with each other, which ultimately it's supposed to be about it. Advancement. I mean, and that's what the Olympics are actually very valuable and powerful for. And in, in my understanding, is because it's a, it's a genuine, you know, unity and a genuine um, uh, the true spirit of competition, which is about advancement. You know, it's a game of leapfrog. You know, it's like I'm going to outdo you this time, but we have mutual respect for like, damn, that was incredible. And now I either have to put up or shut up. You know, I have to advance. I have to top that. Um, but with the true spirit of respect, you know, of for sportsmanship, you know, which is uh, which is what it really. I mean, that's ultimately what the Olympics, where it comes in, as opposed to you know some some other like lesser lesser rivalries um where they don't have that they don't have any respect you know for the game itself or for you know for the which is the journey of evolution the journey of advancement um again again it's all again life is all evolution it's all a game of leapfrog you know we're just leaping ahead of the other one in order so that you know then acting as that rung of the ladder that they can then step on to support in order to you know to climb higher to climb further rather than you know debating which is a beat down to death you know but um i don't know right. i'm just I'm just kind of waxing cool. Right. And, uh, of course, the, the Olympics start with lighting the fire, carrying the torch, carrying the amber to the light to the darkness. And then out of the black comes the light, comes the illumination, the yeah. white. And that is the day. And now we're starting. And here you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every, everything at the origin of Genesis, at the origin of creation is, again, the light penetrates, it pierces the darkness, uh, the void of, of the womb, the cosmic womb, and that light is the masculine pillar, the pillar of light, um, the, the sperm, the white, which penetrates the darkness of the womb, and it, it sets forth the motion of God upon the face of the waters, um, to quote Genesis, essentially, in, in a true physical, in the actual natural physics sense is that you know the light pierces the darkness it penetrates the darkness and thereby divides the darkness which that division is what literally uh, you know the light is literally the spear of destiny it's the the ray of light the ray which um is the becomes the radius which becomes the, the radios the the radius which yep. is the the sun god so the, the ra 
Dius. Ra is the sun, e- ancient Egyptian, which is also Re, um, Ra or Re, um, and uh, Dios, Dios is is both two duality as well as meaning God, which because God is a duality, God is polarity, which is the division, which is the divi, which is in, in Hindu Sanskrit divi, um, which becomes Devi, which becomes Deva, which is deity. Um, because a deity is too. We covered this um, more deeply in my recent Symbols of Power Part Four film, with uh, symbolically. But um, so again, that's that's the the radius divides. It, it sets, you know. The, so the holistic, you know, all that is the all encompassing universe, the all encompassing everything that exists. God itself, you know, is the all encompassing boundary, the circumference, the circumference. You know, we have an inference, we have a circumference, which means, you know, circum means circle. Um, Circe, uh, the feminine goddess, Circe, which is the circle, which is the curve, the feminine curves. And the radius, the radius is the phallic line that penetrates and it divides that feminine and that's what sets forth motion upon the face of the waters that's what you know is the spark the spear of destiny the spark of light when uh, the sperm penetrates the egg the ovum and it creates a spark a flash of light from the zinc which uh, which creates the spark of life it's literally the big bang the microcosmic big bang inside the womb that is exactly reflected macrocosmically of the universe itself the big bang which is referring to the sexual fecundity the sexual process of creation and that sets forth you know the sacred geometrical division of the cell which then you know becomes the fruit of life the the egg of life becomes the fruit of life then becomes the seed of life and you know so on and so forth and that's what creates the geometry that becomes living organisms that becomes a human being um, that we all are that we all share that it's no one is outside of this no one you know is is more special than this in any other you know it's it's not it's not a competition you know other than just to be treated as a, as a respectful you know game you know not not a game, game that we yeah exactly game there it is i wanted to jump to game because it is all a game and you know people sometimes ask so do you think is this is our life and our reality an illusion and whatnot and and yes it is Mm -hmm. it is this what we just you know brought here uh from the black and white the colors come it is an illusion it is somewhat a fake reality even though uh, the, all parts of it are real, but what mm-hmm. we see, what we perceive, what we understand through the words, through our, you know, in whatever direction it, it's pushed in our brain, it, it is a game. It is a play. And here you have the PL again, you know. Mm-hmm. So if it's bleak or pale, uh, uh, black or white, uh, Weiss, uh, in, in German, Weiss, Wissen is to know. Ich Weiss means I know, mm. you know. So there's another aspect of it. So that, if you know, that, that reminds me of wise. Wise, yes, wise. Wissen, uh, 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 yes, yes. Uh, the white beard, the the wise, um, mm-hmm. the wizard, uh, the wizard, the the wise uh, uh, crown and, and, of the tree. And, and it also reminds me of vision. V- vis- uh, what is it? V- vision. Uh, uh, vision, and then vision, and uh, yes. See, view. If you say. Uh, a moment of view, you can say Augenblick. Augen is the eye. Blick, B-L-I-C-K, is the view. That 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 flick when, when you open your eye quickly. That is a blick. If I look at you, uh, ich, ich blicke dich an. Yeah? So mm-hmm. blick, blick is, has to do with the vision and the knowledge oh. of this. It mm-hmm. sounds sounds a lot like bleak, bleak or, ble- or black. Or, exactly. or bleak. bleak. Yes, it's all a play, and if it's not a play, if you don't want to play anymore, then they make you play by suggesting certain uh, circumstances. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it become the play becomes a ploy, and you are either employed or deployed. But it will always be a ploy. It will be a fake play where you play a role, and you're not in the middle of it. You're not the pure wise man of it. Yeah. Exactly. So then you become the pawn on on the board. You become you. The, you are the one who is moved 
by force, by external forces outside of yourself, rather than being the king or the or the or rather, you know, even better than that, the one who is moving, you know, the the pieces on the board, you know, rather than making your own, you know, self um, self driven impulses, you become, you know, at the whim or at the the motion of, of external forces outside of yourself in that play, rather than being, you know, the the creator, the director, you know, the the player of the game, you know, we are the one who who plays the game, you know, so like a video game, we're the one playing the game willfully, but we're also the avatar in the game, you know, kicking ass at the game, you know, yeah. but, but we're also the observer playing the game as well. Whereas the NPCs, you know, the, the gray state is the one who is non-playable character, you know, they're the ones, the golem, essentially, the one who doesn't have their free will, doesn't have their self-knowledge, their knowledge of self, and so therefore they are at the whim of others. They become their their game becomes controlled by, you know, by a ruler, by someone else. They become the pawn on the board. Yeah, and you can, of course, there's not only the pawns, there's there's everything in between, and then there's the king and queen. And we look at word king and queen, they come from the same root too. The only thing that, that is divided is the role they are playing. You know, queen and king both comes from kin, uh, kunta, uh, a cunt, you know, mm -hmm. all is born from that, from that role play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the bedroom. <laughs> in the bedroom or wherever. <laughs> in in uh, which the bedroom is the is the chamber. It's the the quarters, the quarter chamber. It's the uh, the internal chamber, which both exist. You know, essentially the in innermost chamber is the, the the holy of holies, the most. Yeah. You know the the inner sanctum, which obviously refers you know physiologically to, you know the third ventricle of the brain, the innermost chamber, as well as the womb, um, as above, so below the belt, as I've um, mm -hmm. illustrated. But uh, yeah, so uh, but again, the innermost chamber is where the holy matrimony, the hieros gamos, the sacred marriage, the sacred unification occurs. You know, between right. the king and the queen, is in that um, that innermost chamber, which is literally called the thalamus is the thalamus is the inner means the bedroom it means the innermost chamber mm -hmm. and something has to pierce through for that to happen you know you were just talking about the sperm that that has to pierce to the surface into the exact middle of the egg um uh, same it is with the with the chamber where at a certain uh time in the year the light will fall into this you know, shaft, and it will hit the exact middle of those chambers, and the whole oh, thing yeah. starts ringing, and out the top comes, you know, probably a purple ray. <laughs> so, oh or yeah, it's the white. Or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that that whole like sentence that you're explaining, I was just thinking of sex the whole time because there's, you know, the shaft. Uh, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you know what it is. It's yeah, always that, been that one thing. <laughs> that reminds me of that. Of an episode of uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where he's where, where the, the play where he's like, You know what it is, bitch. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, this is the, the shaft ringing off the off the walls or uh, <laughs> hitting yeah. hit, hitting the walls, which creates the resonance, which uh, emerges the light out the out the capstone. Um, yeah, which Beaming. exactly. Beam, beaming the the ray of light the the radiations the the radius the radii of mm -hmm. the of the ra radio of the radio of the radios yeah and you can even see it in cats cats are very uh, of course with with pyramids and cats and what do cats do they purr you know and they're piercing through reality with that purr like you mm. can feel it when you're sitting next to them you don't have to touch them you can feel that that uh, mm -hmm. the the friction, the movement, the, yeah, the resonance, the resonance, yeah, the, and and the, the pur and the pur, the p u r, the pur is the p p v r is the p y r is the pyre is literally means pure, it, the the pyre, the fire, the the pyramid, the fire in the middle, the the is literally the purity, it's the pure fire of purification. It's the alchemical mm -hmm. stage known as the Negredo stage, which oh 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 my God, political correct. We can't say that. Mm -hmm. We can't. We, 
we can't say the ancient alchemical knowledge of physics uh, of of the blackening, don't say which it. is which is <laughs> don't beat you, up, <laughs> which which is the scorching, which is the scorcher, which is the blackening, which is the the um, essentially the the process of uh, of of burning and purifying the essence the elemental essence of the body of the spirit which pure which liberates the spirit from the body which um you know so that's the whole essence uh, the ritual symbolic nature of the true nature of sacrifice which is about you know purifying and and purging the the, yep. the peer the peer of the pyre um and when you get words like perfection you know from it once it's pure once it's purified it is perfect it stands alone by itself doesn't need any uh, uh, adjacent, you know, edges. It is just a thing in the middle. It's mm -hmm. perfect. Mm hmm. Yeah. There was a lot more that I had on peer. Uh, peer. There's there's a lot more that I have. Literally, that's 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 the whole thread that I was going down um, in this. Um, immortal coil um basically presentation that i eventually i'm trying to compile into a book but so much more about that but i i i don't even want to get into that because um you know it'll 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 give too much away too soon plus honestly i don't have it all ready right. to go i mean off it, the top it, it of just my head. keeps going i mean you know we, we can fill this uh, uh conversation with so much stuff yeah peer you just said peer pure the pairing, uh, I mean, it's all there. Once, once you know, once you, once you can kind of uh, walk between the letters and and read between the lines, so to speak, reduce, take out the vowels. Yeah. You really see it's all the same. Yeah. And 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 first, at first, it's it's overwhelming. It's like, oh my god, how do I, how do I manage all that in one? You, you don't need to remember it because the yeah. memory is there. Exactly. And it, it, once you hear a word and now you know, okay, PL is PR because RL shift, uh, a P is F, now you have FL, now you have FR. It's all the freaking same, the yeah. same roots. Yeah. So basically all the words are just describing the same thing. Yeah. Um, with, yeah, with a tad different notion. Yeah, while we were on that, um, what immediately jumped out at me was um, again. Uh, see, I had mentioned peer just by I was thinking P I R, but um, but when you reflected it back at me, that made me get a new perception, which was um, P E P E E R, as in peer, as in to see, yep. as in to you know to peer, P -P as in yeah, as in to pierce, and of course a peer. Uh, P E I R is something that juts out into something else. It's it's like a jetty, and a jetty literally means a jutty. It means to jut outward from um, something else. It is it's to jet? Mm -hmm. It is to yeah. inject. So so the peer is literally to pierce. It's to to send that vision forth. It is to peer into the abyss. And uh, so the light of your consciousness, the, the focal point, the beam of light, um, your laser beam of, of perception peers out into the void, into the darkness, and it pierces, it penetrates that darkness, and it acts as a peer which you can then walk down on your path into… Like a, now if you go to FL from the, from the PL, it's like a flare in the dark night, you know, a flare that you shoot off. Uh, I mean, you can, you know, flare. There are so many words that, that, that just describe this whole system, the matrix we're in. Um, of course, uh, 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 last time we also talked about uh, um, if you do take consciousness enhancing stimuli, you know, like mushrooms mm -hmm. or whatever, then you can sometimes see uh, uh, this matrix literally in the skies. There is the blue, there is the red, and there is the purple. And and sometimes you see like a trapeze, like a like an actual grid. You know, you, the vi it's visible under certain circumstances for mm -hmm. us. Like we can reduce our uh, intake, our our peering. We can reduce it to to the to the true pure uh, matrix grid. You can see it. It's it's phenomenal. Mm hmm Yeah, definitely. And I think that about exhausts. Um, that exhausts it. Um, there's always more, and and we can continue that 
what people should take away here is pretty much, you know, don't let yourself be pushed into a corner too much, to an edge too much, to a side too much. Stay in the middle, look both ways, and kind of realize that 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 we're being played uh, like on a chessboard, as a like ploy. in the sports, a, as a ploy, you know. And and we can always re be redeployed if if we haven't uh, found our enlightenment uh, in the dark in that darkness. Yeah. Oh yeah. Another thing I did want to add also was when we were talking about the uh, shifting the vowels and all of that is, um, I'm not sure if this is in any way you know like secularly correct but of course we don't um we don't uh, abide by you know any of those rules ourselves, anyways but um the way i perceive it through everything i've seen and i've learned is that um it's basically the cons the consonants are like they act like constants you know they yeah. act like it acts like the bare bones like the scaffolding you know, essentially like the masculine um phallic aspect of language <laughs> whereas the vowels the vowels to l are more they the, the sounds of them they're more like a filler you know, if you think of language like as as an actual physical structure, you know, that you could see and you could touch and you can feel is that, you know, the consonants are the act like the constants that, um, you know, they, they remain fixed, they remain rigid. And so that's like your structure that you can build, yeah. you know, linguistic variables off of. But the vowels are interchangeable and they actually fill they fill out the word, you know, they give it the sound that you can actually resonate to, yeah. you know, because I mean, you can resonate consonants like you can resonate m and n like mm, mm, and all of that but the vowel sounds are what kind of like fill it out with like a, it's like the vowels remind me of uh of the feminine curves you know they remind me of like the filling space you know like yeah. the, the o the u you know the the a I, which is the i imagine a, i imagine a painting where uh the black and white are the outlines and then you fill it in with with colors you know where the consonants are the outlines lines on your paper and and you fill it in you color it in with um with the vowels and mm -hmm. uh, uh that gives however you fill it in however you color it in that gives a different impression of the same picture and we should also mention that words in our brain actually the sound becomes pictures you know that that's how that works in our brain uh language is pictures you know, like, uh, but we're trained uh, in, in different ways how we work through this. For, if you just take the word orange, you know, some people will see the color, some people will see the fruit, and some people will only <clears throat> literally see the letters written out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, those are different stages of how you can color in your your reality. Yeah, and that that exactly that gave me a, a, a an even further um, realization was that um, when when painting something, you know, it's the the shades the shading is what we use uh, known as it's in photography or in any type of art it's known as you know the highlights and the low lights or in other words the shading the shadow which is we we um we create that that um contrast of contrast. the uh, of the image of the painting by using by either shading it with black or highlighting it with white right 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 and so um so yeah that just ties it all back full circle again the yeah. essence of, of the black and white is literally just you know the same aspect you know to paint the same you know the same holistic image the same holistic picture um so it's it's just uh it's pretty mind-blowing you know how much of these contradictions there's literally the like this is one of the first things i realized and started writing about when i got into language and linguistics was um the, how how it's all just a contradiction literally sometimes even just the letters themselves are are contradictions are contradictory um or rather than contradictory are polarized um right. you know there's there's a duality within everything it's the a the duality within just the evolution of the words is, you know, it's mind blowing, especially, I mean, when we get into other words, like, you know, things like sick or whatever, where it, it originally was, you know, something meaning ill, where now it's got, we use it as a, as a positive, you know, that yeah. was sick, sick, that was incre <clears throat> incredible. It always uh, means the opposite too, or it can, 
uh, in most of the words cases there is some language or some dialect or some slang where the one word like you just described means the exact opposite i mean it's funky mm -hmm. yeah but I, i'm glad um one of the things that well one of the things we didn't really explore which i know um a lot of our um this is why a lot of you know people out there they use the word melanated as opposed to black you know they use melanated but uh, but again i mean it's the same damn thing and melas in the root word of mel or melas literally means black as well um so i mean it's ultimately the same thing but i know there's a lot of people that will go um off into their own tangents about that you know especially getting into melanin and you know sunlight on the skin <laughs> and the, the scorching of the skin i mean that gets us into because there's tons I get I get these people all the time. I mean, uh, legitimate black supremacists. You know, the the fake he Hebrew Israelites and all of them. You know, uh, the, mostly of the Islamic um, uh, persuasion. All, always, you know, say, saying like, "Oh, well, the white man's gonna get scorched by the by the sun." You know, because he can't. You know, the, his skin can't handle the melanin, so he's gonna get scorched to toast. Whereas the black man will rule the earth. I get these people all the time. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Where, where it's where it's uh, an, an, an achievement to not be able to get out of the sun um, you know uh, what what is it you know what is stronger to be able to shield yourself from sun or to be able to endure it you know you, you can argue back and forth uh, but I don't want to take a position it's 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 both strength uh, evolutionary yeah. strength in a way you know some found okay it's bright out let's go into a cave and the other ones were like damn there is no cave uh, we can only survive if we can absorb all that light yeah. you know so well ultimately it's it's a pointless it's a fruitless argument um because again it's every literally every being with pigmentation has melanin there's two different types of melanin there's eumelanin and there's pheomelanin and then there's also neuromelanin which is produced in the mm. um nigra substantia of of the of the brain which is the brain stem the gray matter <laughs> yeah yeah exactly with the gray and the white matter exactly um yeah so it, again it all just ties in but again there's two different types of melanin you melanin and phaeo melanin. Phaeo melanin is um, the red red pigmentation again, which is um, white people have phaeo melanin, um, especially you know with with red hair and um, red skin tone, reddish skin tone, which I myself have. Um, both uh, reddish tinged hair and reddish skin tone but also because i'm cherokee native american which also has a reddish skin tone you know and that gets us back into the you know the different shades of humanity which is the human and um christopher lord obviously he did um great work on this and i'm going even much for it we will be exploring the entire depth of that etymological symbolic train in my upcoming symbols of power film um i'm not sure if i'm not going to number it because i don't know which one when it'll come out but it's almost finished I'm, it should have been finished a couple years ago, but it goes deep and in, deeper into the origins of, you know, the hue of man, the shades of the shades of humanity coming from the humus, which is the hu the humid of, of the soil, um, yeah. which is the root word of humor. Uh, of hummus uh, referring to the humid the humidity of the soil which the humor literally means humidity it means wetness it means wet um, which is why when we when we uh, when we laugh humor makes us soil and wet ourselves <laughs> that's that's why that's why humor is what it is that's why humor is wet and the wet soil from the wet earth yeah. the wet mud which comes from the red the red dirt we are all we are a, we are all dirt people essentially it doesn't matter who you are you are nothing but dirt yeah. you know it doesn't matter who you're all we're all just dirt you know, weird. And this gets, uh, I'm going to show like so many hilarious clips adding on to that. I'm going to show the, the clip of Will Ferrell's satanic ritual on live TV that he did with um, the Get Hard show um, where, where he was, you're, make him a dirt person. <laughs> and so he starts throwing dirt on the throwing dirt on the guy's face. You're a dirt person. And I was like, that's exactly the truth. It's the occulted. That's the truth. And people are, it goes way over everybody's heads. They have no idea, you know, especially, especially, you know, the, the, uh, what is it? A call for an uprising was like, just like, so I'm appalled. I'm offended. You know, it's like, you don't understand how profound that truth that they just dropped on you is, you know, that's, mm. <laughs> but, 
but yeah, I, I just had a, a funny picture too uh, uh, for for closing up here. Uh, you know, if you go to let's say you go to Africa and there's a, there's a you know there's a lot of deserty um, yeah types of types of soils. Of course, the desert where the sun shines is always kind of bright. It's always kind of white. It's always kind of pale. Yeah, it's right? ble it's bleached. Right, it's bleached, and then when you go into the uh, uh, jungle or whatever, where there is water, where it's where it's wet, uh, the soil gets black. Blacker, yeah, the, yeah. The oh. camp, the soil of Kim, the black soil, the black earth, mm -hmm. the rich, the rich, fertile soil. So um, right, but, right, the opposite of us humans, you know, we're on the ex surface. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But the same thing happens to humans. You know, the more sunlight we get, the darker, the richer we get. Whereas the less sunlight we get, the more pale, the bleaker we get. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's a whole thing how it flips. How that happens all the time, especially with the red and the blue spectrum. You know. Uh, again the the blue is um, the blue is associated with cold you know and darkness whereas the the red is associated with warmth and you know and and sunset where uh, but it flips you know it, it flips where the, the red and the blue light you know as the season goes on it's the red light the red spectrum that actually causes you know the plants to flower whereas the blue spectrum causes it to to vegetate um, mm. so, so it's the same thing how these cycles the polarities they, they flip and they flux you know but depending on the context that you're referring to them in so again that's why it's always always important to to see the whole to see the holistic holistic wholeness of um of the whole thing and that's exactly what it's all about to see that it's all a duality and i mean it's ridiculous sides are needed to yeah. see the whole the separation of the colors is beautiful but keep in mind that it's all coming from one root yep from this all from the same universal source the same source of light you know the same cosmic source yeah which we all are biological living light beings of electromagnetic magnetic energy um electrical impulses fluxing and and uh, moving throughout nature and time and space that's what it's all about right on man well um i'm certainly looking forward for that presentation and all your presentations i mean i've been we've, we've been friends and i've been following your stuff for years so it's always great when you come out with more stuff and i know you've been putting in work for years and years and years so i'm glad uh we had this discussion i'm looking forward for more um but let's give the listeners a little break and we'll reconvene uh, for our next little bits and pieces yeah yeah definitely i'm not sure which one we we will cover next but maybe we could go into the the order of the skull and bones and sculling and schooling oh yes and, let's do that and so yeah we could do that next time um that sounds good all right uh, now i have to prepare something uh awesome all right i'll um hear from you soon all right thanks dope. for listening everybody dope 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 all right dope, we'll, dope. We'll, we'll reconvene until another time well all right have a good one, man. All right. Peace out. Peace out. My name is Cullen Smith. This is Lifting the Veil. You can find all of my full books, presentations, videos, films, articles, posts at patreon.com slash lifting the veil. And um, there are, is also a ton of exclusive content, and I will leave the cited reference links in the description down below. So you can check that out for all of my full content, and I will see you guys in the next video. I rely solely on word of mouth, and the recommended algorithms are not recommending any of my videos or films anymore. My channel has literally been completely restricted, so I rely on your help by sharing my work around if you appreciate it, and uh, leave me your comments. I definitely want to know what you have to share and what you have to think about all of this stuff, and I will see you in the next video.